Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Transatlantic Call-In Show, the show where you can call in and argue with trans people about trans people. Um, and this week, you could be arguing with me, Katie Montgomery, who hasn't been here in a long time, <laughs> and also the amazing... Dr. Ben, and we thought we got rid of Katie, but I guess she decided to come back and our plan didn't work. So we'll have to try again to get her kicked off the show. Um, I'm not the saying on my it's... life has left me scarred and deformed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been saying the last few weeks since you haven't been here that uh, Arden is my second least favorite Takis host, which unless I'm going to say that I'm my own least favorite, that would just, you know, leave you as my least favorite. So now the world knows how much we hate each other. I mean, they already knew that. Um, <laughs> Everyone already knows. We both tried to kill each other once now. Yeah, I'm back. I uh, I had an emergency dentist incident just before Christmas and my face was swelled up. So I missed a couple. And then I also was ill on another one that I was meant to be. I had like a bad cold. So anyway, I'm alive. It's a new year for me um, and excited to be back, I guess. <laughs> Depends how good the calls are. Someone call in and make this make it exciting. Make it a, a slam dunk show back. Um obviously me and Ben will be doing our best to make it exciting too. Um but yeah, what have you been up to, Ben? I haven't seen you in ages. I've been getting bitch slapped by medicine and it's been a time. I'm on nights, so I, I go to work after this, like right after this. Um and then I'll be up all night. Sounds yeah, grim. I mean, that's, that's it. it's all I it's all I do now. It's all I do now is work and show up here. Um, but there are some interesting, uh, and by interesting, I mean tiring and usual discussion that I somehow got into while I was at work last night on Twitter because I got roped into another discussion about how a cis het is a slur. So if anybody wants to talk about so cis het being a slur, <laughs> yeah, it, it's a stupid discussion, but you should call in and not just, you know, talking about it on Twitter, like call into the show and let us- Call in and see if you it. can actually just make an argument, like at all, one that <laughs> that's even remotely has any kind of legs and isn't just, I don't like it. Um, mm -hmm. because that's that's the limit of this is a slur discourse as far as it, oh poppy sorry poppy's trying to drink oh. out of my drink my cat just showed up oh, on the desk it. and she she might knock everything over so we will see how this goes okay can you not <laughs> everyone get your cats out for on stream um, <laughs> there she is oh <laughs> Anyway, we don't just talk about cats on this stream. We talk about LGBT stuff and feminism and skepticism because that is what this channel is all about. So if you think, mm, I'm a skeptic and I'm not so sure about trans rights or I'm not so sure about gay people or I'm not so sure about women, call in and we'll tell you you're wrong and we will use skepticism to show why you should change your mind. Um. But if you don't want to call in because you're too scared and you can't defend your position, another thing you could do is go to our community tab on the YouTube channel and look. And we ask a poll question every week and uh, discuss the results. So perhaps we could take a look at last week's poll. I haven't seen any of the polls in ages, so I have no idea what the question is or anything. Yeah. But so, oh, there's another cat. Me, 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 me. She's gonna. Um, so the okay. <laughs> The question we asked last week was, do you think you should be able to transfer your birth certificate to a new state to update information? And we had 67% yes and 33% no. Ben, this sounds very USA. What is this all about? Um, well, so our conversation was essentially, um, if you live in a state that doesn't allow you to change your gender assignment on your birth certificate, um, where you could just like you would with a driver's license, just move to a different state and get a new driver's license. Uh, you should be able to do that with your birth certificate, move to a new state, get a new birth certificate, and then be able to change it um, in the state that you move to. Um, so that was, that was the whole premise of this, and, and I think it's very reasonable. And I, I know we got some comments talking about, um, well, but what if it's going to cause fraud and all that stuff? But like the reality is, you'd still have the same amount of like red tape as changing your name or changing your driver's license or any of these other things. It's not an instantaneous thing. And like, yeah, 
people can commit crimes with anything at all. Like, I don't think that's really a reason to not allow that. Like, if that's the case, we should not allow people to change any of their documents for any reason if you think that fraud's gonna, it's going to change fraud. Um, so I think that's kind of a garbage point. Um, sorry, my cat is, like, being an absolute <sighs> shit. Wait so until we go... One thing... One thing that I always think is a bit mad from a British perspective, uh, hearing from some people in various USA states, I know that different states have different rules, but in the UK, to change your name, you can pretty much just write on a piece of paper, my old name, I'm uh, no longer going by, uh, my new name, I am going by, sign both names, get two people to witness it, done that is it you've legally changed your name you don't need any to pay any money you don't need any official stamps uh you can just start using your new name straight away and if you don't attempt to commit fraud with it then the law just recognizes it and you can then use that handwritten piece of paper to change your name on your passport your driving license in your bank everything apart from student loans because student loans is completely incompetent um well, some <laughs> weird noise coming through i don't know who that's from uh, okay. Oh, for me, um, yeah. okay. Um, but yeah, the, you know, if, if that leaves people open to fraud, then you would assume that the UK would have way more fraud than the USA. And then you could simply provide the statistics saying, Hey, look, if we let people change their names easily, then the fraud in our state, which is X crimes a year will go up per capita. Because if you look at the UK, it's so much massively higher because all those people changing their names. But I don't think there is that data because we clearly don't have an issue with it. I mean, no government's made an attempt to change it. Um, you well, can still trace records. Yeah, yeah there's record. Like you're about to say, there's record of the previous name. So, <laughs> like, and there's record of the new name. So they're legally tied together as the same person. Yeah, and I think one thing you might get from um, people who. <laughs> don't know trans people or who are like less inclined to be supportive of trans rights, maybe we could say. Um, they'd be like, well, why, why should you be able to change your birth certificate anyway? It's the whole point is it's a record of your birth and like, I can't go back and change anything else about my birth. Like I couldn't change what day I was born on. Like it's meant to be a record. So why can you change it? And in a, like a magical prejudice free world, I wouldn't, I would agree. Like I wouldn't care. Why do I've never looked at my birth certificate? Well, I mean, I have now because I've changed it, but up until that point, like from the moment of being born until I had to change it, I didn't look at it. I didn't even know where it was. I think my mum just had it for like 30 years of my life. And so it's not super important, um, but sometimes it is important. And sometimes you need it to, for example, apply for your first ever passport. I was very lucky to have a passport my whole life. But lots of people don't have that or um, like it can be involved in some marriage ceremonies. It can be involved if you're like emigrating or there are a few times in which you need to use a birth certificate. And then as a trans person, that can then be outing. It, firstly, it can be uh, incorrect and not match any of your details and cause a whole massive headache for someone who's just like, well, this obviously isn't you because not only is this not your name, it also says it's a boy and <laughs> like there's nothing on this certificate that matches you and then you have to explain the whole thing but then that can also be not just an admin headache but like a physical risk or it could be uh prevent you from going through the systems because all you've got to meet is one prejudiced person who suddenly now knows your medical history and might use that to mess things around and that does happen you know that happens with trans people all the time um and that's the reason, the practical reason to update our documents is so they actually match who we are, which makes our life safer and easier. And the argument against it is, well, it should be a record. Like, okay, but it's actually more important that we have documents that we can use in our lives to exist. So, well, and then the fact you, that you and like still the idea the... of a record. Yeah, well, I mean, and you still, still the original, have the documentation. The original, yeah, and the documentation that you had changed the record. Like it's, you you still got right. that documentation there of what did happen and then what you changed it to, like so that's that's still there. So it's all those arguments just 
have so many holes in them. And and another point is like, what do we need sex on birth certificates for? Like, what do you when you're recording right. sex, you're not really recording sex. You're just recording their genitals, which ninety nine percent of the time is totally fine and matches up with people. But if it doesn't, or for what purpose is this? Like, other than outing trans people <laughs> and stopping gay people from getting married, what you? I mean, that's they are the right. main reasons. For there's no other birth, medical history you include on this birth certificate. It's not a health record, um, other yeah, than the which, fact that you were born at, a, uh, other than your age. Um, but like, but you don't you, include that, the other things about your age. health history. Yeah, 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 and it's fine to it's fine to have your birth, you know, second recorded on a birth certificate and something that links it to you, like your birth name or whatever. But like you say, we don't include like eye color or you know, any other fact about you which remains, like your fingerprint or something, um, <clears throat> which would actually be better for identifying people than just having an MRF. And it, to me, it just seems like a tradition that if you say, why are we doing this, then all of the transphobes and homophobes know that if it gets taken off, life will get slightly easier for LGBT people, so they're going to, you know, die on the hill of keeping it recorded there. And then they'll say things like, it should be a record. And then people who haven't really considered trans people's lives at all will be like, yeah, well, it should be a record. So therefore, I'm on team, it should be a record. And I'm not going to listen to any trans people because I've been told they're all mental. So therefore, I am opposed to this. And I'll vote no on the poll on the line. <laughs> um, but this state thing, I mean, obviously, in some states, trans people don't have any rights at all, and they're trying to like pretty much eradicate them from existence. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be able to, I mean, they're, they're effective, but when people are having to leave their states because they can't hold a job there because the state makes them illegal or it bans their healthcare, or it takes their, you know, their documents away from them, then they're effectively refugees in another state, and you should be able to make it so they can exist. Like, mm -hmm. isn't that what you want? Don't Like, if someone's born in some shit state like Florida, no offense to all the Floridians who aren't transphobes, but like, I can understand why you'd want to get out of there if you're a trans person. And if, you know, if, if you could come to England and change your documents, I'd support that. So if you're an American, why wouldn't you support someone from Florida being able to do that in your state? Um, I was uh, hoping Arden was going to send a screenshot for me to comment on, but it doesn't matter. I think we've talked enough about this poll. Mm. Um, Let's go on to this week's question. <clears throat> oh, okay. <laughs> ben, you want to I read love this, this. One? <laughs> uh, Okay. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Uh, can you stop it? Why? Why are you like this today? Uh, <laughs> do you think Graham Linehan's wife will come back to him once he's finally destroyed the transes? Uh, no, I don't think so, because he's a <laughs> shit. <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't know, um, Graham, Linehan's, Graham Linehan is a Irish comedian, um, or he used to be a comedy writer like 20 years ago. And at some point, he completely lost his mind. And now he's a full time anti trans act activist. And um, he's lost his family over it. He's lost his job over it. He recently did an interview saying he was having to hide his car from the people who are trying to repossess it because he's run out of money. Um, and it might seem kind of cruel that a lot of trans people enjoy laughing at his suffering. Um, but the thing is, he is such a horrible person and he has caused so much suffering to so many people. Um, I mean, personally, he's gone for me quite a lot. Um, and I'm not going to go into all of the things, but, um, you know, sexual harassment and stuff is just standard on his blog, just posting people's personal details. Accu like he's accused, he said like all the, uh, people, uh, major trans rights activists are pedophiles and stuff like really extreme stuff. Um, and you know, has been personally a source of a lot of his goons come and say all this horrific abuse at me. He's made up a lot of stories about people that aren't true but because he has such a like a cult following it just becomes a new fact about your life and like they can be anything from really horrible things about your body or your family or your health and stuff but also just these little weird ones like most of the british gender criticals uh think are convinced and nothing i can say would prove otherwise 
are convinced I went to a private school. I didn't, but that's just part of my law now. In in gender critical land, I went to a private school, and they, you know, they've decided on all these details about my life that's just aren't true. But it's all because <laughs> stuff he said. So, uh, I'm sure if you if you if you don't know who this guy is, uh, you can YouTube him. There's quite a few good rundowns of it. Um, but one of the things he often mentions is how it's trans people's fault that his, you know, family broke apart. Um, and well, <laughs> he also blames trans people for well, pretty much everything that's gone wrong in his life. And at a certain point, you kind of just have to take responsibility for it uh, yourself. But I don't know. Uh, you could you can vote on this as you will. I I won't be offended if you are offended by it. <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyway, it looks like Ben has had to disappear. Um, so you can full screen me, and I can describe the next section of the show. Or okay, we'll just do. Oh, yay! So another way to join in, other than commenting on that poll and getting an argument with some passers-by who don't know quite what's going on, you can also send Sorry. super chats to the show. That's all right. Um, <laughs> if you send a super chat five dollars or more, then we will read them out at the end of the show, and um, we would be very grateful for that. There are other ways to support us. For example, we have a Patreon for the line. Uh, but the super chats is the most fun way. So send us some super chats if you if you have the funds and you would like to. Um, but I think just before we get into calls, I heard that you've all like started cults since I've been away. Like, uh, do I need to start a cult? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> but you weren't here. You weren't here for the time when we were starting cults, so you just don't get one now. Um, but there are lots of people in the audience that have a. Uh, Dr. Benus's go-go juice mug, and they're the coolest <laughs> people of them all. Um, and then some slightly less cool people have a mug with Arden's dimples on it. Uh, and I guess those people are okay. Um, and then a whole bunch of people that we don't like have Forrest's mug, because apparently he's the most popular. Um, but he's not part of this show, so obviously he's inferior to uh, our cult. He has cult, the cyst, for... Yeah. yeah. I did. I need a mug. What do I? I need to come up with something to put on a mug. Super chat me and some ideas of something to put on a mug. I mean, I pr presume it's got to be anti mayo themed, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> More than likely. <clears throat> so let's get into some calls. We do have some space on the lines. If you would like to call in, please call in. I'm sure the lines will fill up, um, but we can take a call while we. Uh, well, we can just take a call. I don't know what I was going to say then. Let's take a call. So we could talk to um, Sassy in NY. I guess that's New York. Who wants to talk about gender identities and constructs? Uh, Sassy, go for it. Yeah, hello. Oh, hello. Yeah. Katie, hello. Monty Python, and the Flying Circus, Montgomery. Uh, yeah. Is that who I'm talking to? <laughs> okay. No, you are talking to that. Katie that was, I, I thought of a nickname for you. That was that was that's my nickname for you, Katie. But uh, hello, Dr. Okay. Ben. How are you two doing, doing today? Cool. Yeah, we're yeah. doing all right. Yeah. So you want yeah, to talk about constructs. Jen? Yeah. yeah, go for it. Yeah. Um. So I've been kind of discussing gender constructs a lot uh, at RFR support groups, and I've called into the show, the trans the show, a couple of times, a handful of times in the past. And the only answer that I can get from the trans, from my community, our community that I'm a part of, on many different levels and spectrums, um, transgender and intersex alike, and gay and and hetero flexible and straight alike okay. uh, is the gender is just a label that we place on somebody with whatever anatomy. And it really doesn't mean anything. But then what is true identity? Like, why can't we say that maybe women like to be a little bit more dainty and feminine and demure? Like, these are these words not right anymore? Or are my words not correct? Or yeah, so there are, like, there are multiple problems with things anymore? that you're saying here. There are multiple things that you're saying here. And and I think I think too, like I I would push back number one on the, the statement that 
I, I mean, maybe this is the only argument you've heard, but it's a pretty terrible argument that gender is just a label because I think the majority of people in the trans activist space are not claiming it's only a label. There's a lot of depth in how gender functions as a role like in society um, and is a, a significant component for driving social hierarchies and, and driving where you fit in your culture and, and in your societal structure. And mm -hmm. that would take a, a lot of like, like people study this concept for years about gender and how it fits within society. Um, so I can just kind of give some, some brief overviews on that. But as far as like, relating gender and very specific attributes of like daintiness for women see that's conflating then a gender identity label with a stereotype and that's something we're trying not to do um so you can have and we we see this very clearly you can have women who very clearly identify as women who i would not describe and they would not describe as dainty at all like for example you look at a lot of Katie's metalhead friends. Um, I would not describe them as dainty, but they are women. Um, God, they're not going to welcome you when you come back. <laughs> I mean, they could be. They could be dainty if they want to, but it's just like. Um, <laughs> but, but like. Ben's there, banned from Bristol. <laughs> I'm banned from Bristol. No, but, but there's. A, a significant amount of people, especially too, in yeah. like uh, the butch lesbian community, that would not identify with daintiness or with a certain type of femininity. Like they would say that you can be feminine and not necessarily be a stereotype of femininity. Um, and, and so it's problematic to say that all of these traits, these personality traits, are linked to a gender identity. Like in the same way, there are a lot of men who would consider themselves to be more dainty and how we stereotypically see femininity, but they clearly identify as men and they exist in a social uh, sphere as, as a man. Um, and, and so there's a lot of depth here I think that you're missing. And I, I think staying on the surface level is okay for some discussions for people that don't really have the understanding, but I think it's an oversimplification right. at best and can lead to a lot of problems if we were to just stay in in that superficial sphere of discussion mm -hmm. well to, yeah, to bring think... it to a less superficial and more to the point if katie if you don't mind let me answer if you don't mind me answering yeah, dr ben because I, I want you to speak but let me answer dr ben if you don't mind uh dr ben i think maybe you i don't want to say that you misunderstood me because i don't want to assume anything on your part or mine uh but just to reiterate and to make things more clear I am not a cis man, even though I might sound as male. I have male genitalia, but I'm not a cis man, and I'm not comfortable in my skin. And I feel I'm a feminist. I, I believe in feminine empowerment. I believe in female empowerment, no matter what form that takes. I think the toxic. I think there are more toxic men and more men. I think men on this planet are more are cause more problems than women do. I wish women were ruling the world. I think if we would have had a woman president by now, we would have had far, our nation would be far better off and in a far better position than it ever would be now had, our, had, had, had we not had a woman president. I mean, if we did have a woman president. Now, that being said, um, I think that, you know, this is, you're right, Ben, this is a, Dr. Ben, this is a very extremely complicated topic. But I don't want to, like, I'm not trying to stereotype anybody. And but like and gender, gen, yes, gender roles are a societal construct. But when I say I identify as a lady and a woman, I'm trying to find out what that means for me. And when somebody says it's a label where it's mere genitalia and it's what you've got going on downstairs or upstairs, I feel uncomfortable with that. And I need something a little bit more of substance. I need to. I need. I want to hear a woman right. say, "Hey, rock yeah. yourself out, girlfriend." Yeah. See, that makes sense. I think the problem was with the uh, original question and the way that it was uh, phrased. Um, Frame, but yeah. and, and and something too, like, and I want to clarify too that, like, the reason why I I will push back on things even 
even against somebody who isn't cis. Like, it's not because I'm assuming that you're cis. It's because there are still plenty of trans people that say problematic things. And I want to make sure that we're all saying we're making good arguments. And um, so it, it wasn't it wasn't me right. trying to suggest that you're not trans, but I want to make sure we're making good points and making and asking good questions. Well, um, no, that's I, yeah. No, that's that's why that's why I clarified and said I don't want to assume anything on your part. So let me clarify. Yeah, I, I think Katie might want to jump in for a sec. Um, well, I guess the first thing sure. I want to say is that the UK had a, a female head of state, in Margaret Thatcher, in the eighties, and she was like one of the worst head of states we've ever had. So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't come out with having women would definitely make a country better. I'm sure that the uh, power structures in the U USA would make the country get progressively more garbage, regardless of who was in charge. But um, I hear what you're saying. I think that more if you had female leaders, it's more of a sign that your society is heading towards already becoming more equal. And just having women leaders itself isn't necessarily a step of progress. It's more like a symptom. Um, but anyway, to, onto your like kind of question, I think what's important is like trying to work out when you're using various words to describe things, what your intention for doing that is. Because I think identity is very important to people. I mean, people have religions and families and football teams and all kinds of things which they include in their identity. And all of that kind of stuff is, you know, we could say, oh, humans made up. It's a social construct. And you could easily very much wave your hand at that and be like, oh, in that case, it's not real. It's made up. All that matters is like material biology or something like that. But all of these identity things and culture stuff does mean a lot to everyone on earth to some degree and has a very real impact on your life i mean to obviously where you're born in the world like which physical location can massively affect uh your life and that's just something we made up even though it can you know prevent you from being able to walk over some borders and on all these other kinds of things um but when so when we're talking about like what your identity is i guess if if you have that kind of like in the sense of belonging how would you describe where you belong or, or what words do you think best describe yourself you know if someone asked me what is my identity I, my, like i've said on this show quite a lot of times before the first thing i'd probably say is a metalhead and that is still true though i'm also now very addicted to pokemon cards <laughs> so maybe i'd mention that as one of my top things as well but i think that you know if i had to just pick one thing yeah. metalhead is them they're, they're my people first and you know i could say woman would be on my uh, list of things and so is being a trans person so is being british and and all the other kind of things that factor into my uh, identity but they're all kind of descriptions of where i sit in society and how i want to communicate myself to other people and I guess when we're talking about gender and sex and gender in all of its different meanings, including both gender roles and expectations, as well as like, do you consider yourself a man or a woman or non-binary, etc. It's a big kind of complicated soup where the context in which you look at it drastically changes what is important and how you would want to answer that question. Like if you were um, going to the doctors and they were going to give you some medicine or something, and they were like, you know, what? what's your gender? That's not so much an identity question as maybe they're trying, I mean, you should probably inquire if they just say, what is your gender? I'm gonna give you some medicine. You'd be like, hang on, hang on. Why are you asking this question? Does it affect the doses when you say gender? Is that because it's related to hormone levels and actually mean like different sex things or are you just gonna, you know, write Mr. or Mrs. on the label? Like you need to know the context of why you're answering these questions. But then in some other situations, um, you know, like we can argue about how um, maybe having gender segregated traditions isn't a net good thing for society. But the reality is that people do have them. And a very good example is when people get married, at least in the UK, we have stag and hen parties, which in the USA, I think you call bachelor and bachelorette parties. And they're often gender segregated, not always. Yep. Um, and people that's kind of breaking down as people s start realizing that having these segregated gender things is a load of rubbish. But if you know some people who have these traditional views and they're like, do you want to go on the stag 
party or the hen do? Or do you want to come on the bachelor party or the bachelorette party? They're kind of asking you, they ask, they are asking you an identity question, but, and they're, they're not really asking you a hormones question. Uh, and maybe they're just asking where you want to fit in, or maybe they, you know, if you're talking about a trans person, maybe they wouldn't even know that someone's trans or, you know, that there's a whole sort of cascade of things that we need to consider when we're asking those questions. So I guess when I am asking, answering this question in general, you know, what is, what is the label we should use for this person? And people love to ask, you know, what is a woman? Um, I always say there's only two reasons why I care about what these definitions are. Um, and one of them is this kind of belonging question. If someone wants to tell me about their life or describe themselves or tell me how they see themselves, I'm interested on a personal level. You know, if I meet someone at a party and they're like, oh, my identity is potter. I am, you know, I just love making pots and clay things. And that's cool. That's a good question. I can now talk to this person for hours about pottery because I know nothing about it and it's interesting. And that's that identity. And if they want to say to me, I really strongly feel like being a man is my identity or something. Okay, now I know something about you. You can tell me why you feel like that. And maybe they have some bullshit, outdated gender expectations. They're like, I would, I feel like I'm a man because I'm strong and because I'm fearless. And then I'd be like, well, I think it's a load of rubbish because loads of women are strong and loads of women are fearless and loads of men aren't strong <laughs> and loads of men aren't fearless. But that's cool. If you see yourself as a man and you see yourself as strong, you see yourself as fearless, they're okay. All I want to do as a feminist is break apart that you think those three things are inseparable. And I would say, they're not inseparable. You can be those three things separately. And then the other reason why I'd want to know what label someone might use is when I'm trying to make the world a better place, like addressing structural prejudice mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. And so in that case, I could meet someone at a party and maybe they are a trans woman and they just came out yesterday or maybe they you know know who i am from the internet and they want to tell me and say oh i'm going to come out next week and i'm really nervous i've not told anyone or something they're telling me about how they view themselves and they're trying to communicate something self something about themselves um but if i am then you know going to a march and demanding the end to misogynistic sexual assault in the workplace or something as a trans woman who hasn't come out yet they are not going to be targeted by that but we can have this argument about where in their transition that starts happening and whether it technically affects them because they're still seeing it and they consider themselves as work there's a lot of gray area things here but i don't think it matters because the like the structural question isn't an individual level what i need to say is there are women on the earth and women have uh, a load of structural prejudice against them which has led to things like the usa has never had a female leader um and that's because of structural prejudice against women in politics and so that is something we need to first be able to identify and secondly be able to tackle and understand why it's happening so we can get rid of it and we then can know that things like education and um and you know a whole host of things can combat misogyny but it doesn't really specifically matter that this person i met at the party i could say well you know, that'd be like you know i i'm gonna come out as a woman and it's you know that's how i see myself as my identity i'm like cool but i don't need to be like well actually you've never experienced sexism so you're not a real woman or actually your genitals are the wrong shape so you're forbidden like that's not important because when I'm doing the structural analysis, I'm like, right, okay, people who are affected by this prejudice, let's team up together. Everyone who isn't affected by this prejudice, either become our allies or fuck off. Um, and that's that's kind of the <laughs> landscape. Um, so for you, for you yourself, I mean, you know, how you, you could, if you consider yourself a man or a woman or a non-binary person or cis or trans, that's interesting to me. You know, if, if we were to become friends or if we meet at a party or even if you just want to tell me on this call. But also, it doesn't mm. matter in the wider scale of things when I'm saying let's end transphobia, let's end misogyny, because I'm sure you're the kind of person who would be like, yeah, let's do it. It doesn't matter whether it affects me or not. I'm an ally in this fight. 
I when I have something relevant to say in a conversation, I'll say it, and I'm not going to talk over people who have more experience than I do. So I guess I don't know. That was quite a long rambly answer, but maybe I answered your question. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I okay, think you answered great. a lot of my <laughs> questions. Actually, yeah, my, my two mind, my two mind. If I actually add to that. First of all, misogyny affects me every day of my life. Misogyny has affected me by uh, very strong uh, uh, females in my life who have very strong misogynistic tendencies toward me and have been very off-putting toward my unique color on the rainbow society spectrum. I'm sorry to hear that. And I've been sexually, I've been sexually harassed. By older gentlemen, I've been sexually harassed, uh, sexually assaulted when I was a child. Uh, sorry for the I didn't give a trigger warning. I don't. Uh, you guys aren't mom. You guys, um, you guys don't know if you like That's- a trigger warning before or after. But uh, you know, I mean, I've lived a hard life, and I'm just trying to discover myself. And when mm-hmm. when people tell me I can't adopt a li- can't adopt something we're finding empowerment in calling myself a lady or a woman because it's merely a label, then I lose all sense of myself because I find a great empowerment in calling myself a woman. And Dr. Ben, I'd like to say to you, thank you for correcting me. Thank you for help sussing it out with me and not writing me off as some transphobe, cystic, cis man, because that's not who and what I am. Dr. Ben, you know, I mean, I'm trying, I'm someone, I'm I'm someone who's half man, half woman, trying to make my way in a life that's extremely complicated because of the unique situation in life that I find myself in. And I find your shows and the transatlantic call and show and many of the line call and shows quite enlightening. And you guys, Katie, Dr. Ben, two of the biggest reasons why I've come over to the realm of agnosticism. So thank you. Oh, amazing. Well, I, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that you've, you know, had difficulty in your life and I'm glad that you feel some like empowerment over it. I guess one thing I wanted to comment on you saying is you feel like sometimes you can feel like lost and don't know where you are when someone tells you you're wrong. One thing I would like to give you is the gift of like, fuck off, not to you, but to these people. Like I, I used to feel insecure about who I was too you know I went through coming out was a long phase and for some people it can last ages and ages and I yeah I was very insecure about it and I could have you know people would say something about me or or whatever and it could leave me reeling and feeling like who am I and and doubting myself and and worrying if I you know regret coming out and all of these other kind of things um but also, I remembered yeah. that I used to be insecure about other things. I don't know if you've ever been insecure about other things in your life, but again, going back to music, I used to be insecure about being a metalhead. For some reason, I don't really know why, but it's the thing that all metalheads seem to do when I meet them and they're like, you know, their first outing at the pub or something and they're 18. They've always got these like really cringe, like they feel like they have to defend their choice of music and they feel like they have to, def- I don't think it's because they're often outcasts in society to some re- some degree, but they always feel like they have to prove themselves and defend themselves. And they, they look down on certain bands and like, if you like a certain band, they're like, oh, that's not a real metal band. Like that's insecurity and how they express it. And I know I used to feel like that. And I, people, you know, if I'd meet someone at a party and they're like, metal isn't real music, I'd feel like I'd have to go, have a go at them. Now I'm in a position where if someone said that to me, if literally everyone on earth said that to me, I'd be like, well, you're just an idiot then. Like you are literally just missing out on a part of life and I am better for (laughs) not missing out. And, and I realized that I had, I had gone from being insecure about this to being you know, totally secure, uh, unshakably secure. I, I do not care. And I did a similar journey with atheism. Um, I, I do not care to argue for it anymore for my own security. Like, it doesn't upset me if, if I meet religious people who, who say something. I, I'm not stressed by it at all. And I was like, I can get there with trans issues. I know I can do this because I've done this, like, insecurity journey before. So I really focused on it and I really thought, like, like rationalized it and went through it all. If someone, if I meet someone who 
thinks I'm a man or thinks I shouldn't have human rights or, you know, says all these things. It's, it's upsetting. Like, it's upsetting in the degree that someone is going out of their way to say something horrible to you or someone doesn't believe who you are or someone doesn't value you as a full human or something. But then also these people, like, their opinions are literally worthless. Like, they have no value. Uh, they've upset you, but you've also got to look at it like, you know, if you walk through, like, a safari or something, the animal, like, the lions are going to roar at you and the monkeys are going to throw fruit at you or something. Like, that's what they do. Humans are stupid. Some humans just say things about trans people. And I'm like, well, you're an idiot then. It's like they said to me, like, they're like, oh, Cheese on toast is bad food. You know, Metallica isn't a good band. Uh, you know, Pokemon cards is stupid. Like, I don't care. Like, everything you said to me is worthless. And they're like, and you're a man. I'm like, equally worthless. Has no value to me. Uh, so when you're feeling this, just think, I know I can rationalize through this. And, and when you get there, it's like, just pings off you. Like, people tell me I am a man. You know, pr probably once a second on twitter i think it's got some like and uh, it's it's almost i mean i went for a phase of it being funny because i was like this is their life now it's just kind of white noise like i don't even really notice it but oh Katie. for a while it was kind of Katie, funny Katie, like Katie, Katie, you were one of the most you were one of the most beautiful absolutely beautifully stunning women i've ever seen in my entire life i want you to know that sweetheart you're one of the most sweet women I have seen. And I want well, you to very know, kind of you. I wasn't Japanese compliment fishing. I wasn't Japan Japanese death metal. Japanese death metal. Yeah. Sample it. It's fantastic. Okay. Uh, link me on Twitter or something. That's very cool. I'd love to check it out. Um I've just realized What's your name on Twitter? What's your name on Twitter? Uh hey, Katie Montgomery. Montgomery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I should have known that. Okay, guys, thank you for the call. Yeah. I don't want to keep you any longer. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Sorry you didn't get a compliment to at the end there, Ben. <laughs> I should I, just I complain about misandry like uh, a lot of people. <laughs> like a lot of it's obviously because they hate them. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> right, okay. Are you ready for... So we're just doing like a gender angle. Are you ready for a sex angle? But not a sexy yes, angle. Yes, I'm ready. So yeah, I'm ready We are for going this one. to talk to yeah. Julia in Germany who wants to talk about biological male versus biological female. Julia, go for it. Hello. Hello, can Hi. you hear me all right? Yeah, yep. we can hear you great. Okay, great. I'm very happy to uh, speak to you. Um, I love listening to the show and you both specifically are like two of my favorite hosts. So it's very, very, very happy to speak to you. We are the you. two best hosts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, my topic is, um, I kind of, I very often see uh, in debates on Twitter, because I follow them quite a lot, um, people just say, oh, well, you're a biological male, whatever you say, or you're a biological female. And um, I realized, even though I've listened to the show quite a lot and followed conversations, I still haven't like 100% kind of understood what it means for you to be a biological male or female. So I kind of wanted to dig, dig down into it a bit more and just like give you my point of view and like kind of ask you what you think and if it makes sense. Yeah, go for it, go for it. Yep. Okay. <laughs> And I, I just wanted to say, it, this is like just purely kind of a um, matter of like um, nomenclature or like uh, like philosophical interest for me. So I'm 100% like for uh, trans people have like every possible right. And, you know, so it's nothing to do with that. It's um, just really purely kind of, yeah, really just a scientific interest. That's right. You can be as offensive um, as you like. We'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just I, I don't want to say anything offensive, so I hope I don't say anything that's not that's weird. But anyway, so so as I understand, like just um, sex is basically just made up of like different characteristics. So there are chromosomes and primary sexual characteristics and secondary sexual characteristics, and um, they all distribute. They all have like a bimodal distribution, I guess, more or less. So you have a male yeah. peak and a female peak, and sometimes it's like a wider spread, and sometimes it's a narrower spread. 
Um, and for me, yeah. also identity. Um, so gender identity is also kind of a sex characteristic, and that happens in the brain. Like I don't really understand it when people say, "Oh, it's this is just in your mind, and it's not real," because like little children already know, like can identify as male or female, so they know what it means, they know what it is. So it's something that happens in the brain, and the brain is also biological. It's also like a part of your anatomy. I mean, it's like, so it's like who you are, sense. isn't it? Your brain. Yeah. So that's like it's yeah, so you. Yeah, so it, it, it just... Sorry. Yeah, no, go on, go on. They interrupt you. Yeah. No, no, I'm yeah, with so you so far. So just... a... Sorry, go on. Delay. Okay, so There's a delay. It's a... Is this for Sorry, things? Sorry, go on. Um, so chromosomes. Hello? <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. This because there's a delay, and I keep being like, "You can carry on," and then you must just get to you as you start talking. All just right. ignore what I'm saying and finish yeah. your thing. Okay, it's all so good. <laughs> okay, no, no, okay, I'm gonna just finish finish my uh, yeah. my thing. Um, yeah. So you so at, so when you um well not when you take like these different characteristics, so I guess you could have like one person who like on all of them is like kind of a perfect well not perfect in the good but perfect is in like the highest amount like female and you could say okay so this person has excess chromosomes has like all the genitals that a female would have and like the uh, um, produces the uh, uh, gametes and identifies as a female so that's woman is like or this person is like 100% a woman uh, or like 100% female right Okay. Yeah, we're we're tracking with my, you. Is my, there? My, yeah. No. Keep going. Keep going. My 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 screen suddenly has just started going rainbow colors. I'm not sure if it's supposed to tell me something. It's weird. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah. So so you could have like a kind of a, a, a perfect female person in that sense, and like a perfect male person. But I wonder if somebody has, for example, uh, all male characteristics, but then apart from identity, and then identifies as female. Like, is it okay then to say, for example, this person is like 90% male, but 10% female, or like the other way around? Right. And then as they transition, as they kind of gain more and more characteristics of like the opposite sex, which you say this person kind of becomes more and more female or male, like in percentage. So that's kind of I my question. Like... Can you say like, is it like a question of percentage or proportion of male versus uh, female no, in every person? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think I don't think that's a good way to look at it. Um, I, I mean, scientifically, you could stack up everybody's individual traits and see where they fall on the spectrum for, like, research purposes or like for for medical purposes of like, can we, uh, can we figure out better medications for these people or like for example you you could have application of that in things like transition of saying like hey if you have certain characteristics is there a different dosage of hormone therapy that we need to give you based on these characteristics like that would be a, a reasonable application for something like that um but in terms of just being able to say you're a certain percentage male or female i honestly don't really see the utility for and i think it's problematic, especially in a social setting where we're already having a lot of stigma and oppression for people that identify as, as a gender different than their sex assigned at birth. And, and I feel like adding this additional hierarchy of maleness or femaleness biologically is going to cause significant social distress primarily. Um, and, and so I would, I would hesitate against doing that. Um, like, and, and again, maybe there, maybe there's some medical legitimacy to it but i would just maybe frame it differently and just consider it as like you're an individual mm -hmm. person with these characteristics how can we best work with these characteristics that you have instead of like trying to nitpick where exactly on the spectrum they are and and because also we're never going to know we're never going to know where you actually fit because even if we break down each of these factors we still have more variables that are going to be uncovered and especially with chromosomes you have x and y chromosome but then you get deeper into okay but do they have an sry gene uh, do they not have sry do they have uh like fox2 do they have 
all these other genes that contribute. And we're not putting in the extensive amount of study and uh, genetic testing to determine every single sex gene that you have on each of these chromosomes, because that would be ridiculous. Um, so I, I just think it'd be kind of a futile effort to do any of this, and it would just cause more problems. And I, I don't know if Katie feels the same. Yeah. So yeah, I, I totally agree with what Ben was saying. I guess I'll come in from less of a doctor angle and more of a maths angle. Um, so one way that you can uh, describe sex, uh, or a w mathematical way of describing what you have described, where basically there are a collection of sex characteristics, and at least some of them are, you know, distribution, perhaps bimodal distribution, and some of them you could argue were maybe discrete. What you have there is a load of different properties. So you have like, you know, you can pick a random person and this person has like XY chromosomes and this level of progesterone, this level of estrogen and, you know, all of these things. And you could go down and write all of the different values for all of their different uh, things. And we can call those properties or we could also call them dimensions, because if you were to draw a graph, you could draw, you could pick any two of those dimensions and you could plot them against each other and you could you could have like testosterone level and estrogen level on a two-dimensional graph and you could measure me and Ben and you and and everyone we could plot them on the graph and we might end up with some kind of bimodal distribution um and that could be interesting um but you can actually like uh, sorry I'm talking to you as if you don't know anything about maths I'm sorry if you know all the math stuff but I guess for the general audience you can actually just dimensions you might think oh we can only have three but you can actually in maths just say we've got as many dimensions as we like um and then we just have this idea of like a multi-dimensional space so sex then becomes a multi-dimensional space you can have one axis for um you know what chromosomes you have and maybe it just has two values um and they're not necessarily ordinal which means that they you could put them either way around on the graph it's not like zero and one and two where two is bigger than one and one is bigger than zero it's just like it could be red or green and neither red or green is more than the other so they're just in any random order but you could draw you could have this graph and theoretically you I mean, you can't draw it but you could store that information uh somewhere and the issue of this percentages thing is you are flattening a multi-dimensional space where if I said, give me, Julia, get, you know, tell me all of your sex properties. I have this wizard here who can measure all of them, every single gene you have, every single hormone, etc. <laughs> yeah. If that was the case, I could get this huge multidimensional thing, all of the information about your sex characteristics. And then if I just compress that down into a single percentage, and I'll just be like, Julia, you are 94% female or something. I've lost all that information. I no longer know anything about your chromosomes or your hormone levels or, you know, your primary sex characteristics, anything. And we could have someone else who has a totally different set of characteristics to you. But because we're kind of merging all of these dimensions into one single one, they have the same score as you. And we could say, oh, yeah, I, know, I met someone else who's 97% female and she has this hormone level and this chromosome set up. And, and you're like, hang on, none of these are actually the same as mine. And this is just, this isn't any property of like sex or anything. This is just the result of compressing. This is just a maths thing. Compressing multidimensional data set into a single dimension, you're just going to lose information. That's inevitable. And I guess when you say lose information, that is a mathematical term too. But also it's true in the sense of when you're trying to communicate this to someone, what is the reason you're doing it because if you're saying it to a doctor like you know you need to go into ben and you potentially have some condition which has some kind of bimodal or or um what's the word for it sexually dimorphic response to the medication or something and you said oh ben i need some medicine i've got this problem i'm 93 percent female absolutely meaningless he's going to be like <laughs> well okay does this this disease actually affect you know, it affects uh, people with ovaries. So all I need to know is, do you have ovaries or not? And if so, then I need to look at them and see what condition they're in. And and if that's the case, then it doesn't really matter what any of your other sex characteristics are. But sometimes it's like, this affects ovaries, but because they have a certain estrogen level, or this affects a rat the area around 
like the uterus, uh, endometriosis or something, and then very rarely it can be in a situation where someone doesn't have a uterus or, or ovaries. And um, yeah, so I think in that sense, we've got to say, well, what is the context for this question, biologically male? When you say, where, oh, is this person biologically male or biologically female? In a lot of cases, really what they're asking is, are you a man or a woman? Because in my brain, there's two boxes and you fit in one of them or the other and I treat you differently depending on what, what the answer is. Um, and that's often how the law works as well. But if you were talking to a doctor who's going to help you, then suddenly they need to split apart all that information. But a lot of the time, where specifically when you hear biologically female and biologically male, what, all this is is a transphobe trying to come up with an excuse to not give you human rights. It doesn't matter to them. None of the stuff matters. They say biology a lot because they they have this kind of blind faith that basic biology just defends them and they don't need to consider anything else. Because as soon as you say the word identity, they're like, oh, well, don't care about that. Biology. It's all I care about. Basic biology. I, I, that's it. I don't need to think anymore. But then you're like, well, what do you mean basic biology? Biology is really complicated and it's a multi-dimensional, hugely complicated <laughs> space. And all like most of these sex characteristics can change during your life. And you can't just put people into one of two boxes and it's totally context dependent. They don't care about any of that. They're, they are completely uninterested. They just have this blind faith that's binary and it's unchangeable. Um, and, and that's why they're going to say it. And that's why if someone said to me, because I've had these, like, not saying you at all, but I know that sometimes you get these kind of, uh, I'm a skeptic and I like science and I've not ever approached trans issues before. But to me, I, I don't mind respecting trans people, but all it seems to me is your gender is female and your sex is male. Why can't you just accept that? As if like they're just trying to take the the skeptic position. Oh, I've oh, you know obviously you can't change your biology, but and it's just factually wrong because I mean neither of yeah. those two things are binaries. <laughs> neither of those two things are single dimensional properties, uh, and neither of those things are like immutable. So I get when you're trying to draw a general picture, you might want some kind of baseline to uh, communicate on and that's why i'd say i am a trans woman um and then even within the category trans women that has loads of different things you know we can have different genitals or different hormone levels etc but i've communicated some of that and if someone's like what is your biology i can tell them the bits i know i can say for sure what actually i can't say for sure what my hormone levels are because i haven't had them measured in quite a while but i know which hormones that i should my short hormone level should be from what i take and what i know i produce <laughs> um and a bunch of other things uh like i know what genitals i have etc but i don't know all of them i don't know what my chromosomes are maybe my chromosomes probably they're probably just x y and it's probably the same throughout my whole body but not necessarily um and that information isn't that useful. But if someone's trying to do this like skeptic angle, like, oh, well, I can't, couldn't you just say biologically male chromosomes then? Like, you can say that if you want. If you want to say, you know, for the, the ease of communication, uh, there are multiple different sex chromosome setups, but the two most common ones are XX and XY, and X, X I'm going to call female chromosomes, and XY I'm going to call male chromosomes. Katie, what ones do you have? In that, with the, with the setup you've just given me, and I don't disagree with any of the facts you presented, I'm happy for you to call them male chromosomes. And then if you were to say, oh, that makes you a biological male then, that is the bit I have issue with. I don't have this, I'm not offended by someone describing X, Y as male, because you've got to communicate somehow. Uh, you can, I mean, it's more correct to say these are X, Y chromosomes, but who cares? Like, if you call them male chromosomes, I do not care. But to then extrapolate all of my other properties, it's like doing the reverse. Like it's like you saying, "Oh, well, X Y is a hundred percent male, so therefore I can deduce all of your other sex characteristics." And that is false. Like it's mathematically impossible because you're now not you personally, mm. but someone doing this is trying to extract all of this other dimensional information that we lost when we compressed it into a single dimension. You you know nothing about my other sex characteristics just for certain just from xy you can make a lot of good predictions if you know someone's xy and they are like an adult then you can probably roughly guess the hormone levels and 
probably be cre pretty correct on what their genitals are and what body hair they have and all this kind of stuff because it's a general pattern, but you cannot know for sure, even ignoring trans people. And that is why I just think the term biological male, as soon as we're talking about trans or important intersex people, that's another case where it would be bullshit to describe someone as a lot more or less female because a lot of intersex people are just cis people who are just trying to fit in and live their lives and they're not necessarily affected by transphobia but they face their own systematic prejudices and oppressions and then if someone comes in and be like actually you're just 75 percent female like that's fucking garbage like they're like no i'm not i'm just as much of a woman as everyone else just because i don't have some body part <clears throat> fuck off and i think that's that's a totally fair response but yeah, I think that the term like <laughs> biological male or biological female, it's it's either archaic, overly simple, or specifically with the purpose of taking people's rights away. So I'm not really a fan of the term, but whatever. I don't know. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> oh, it's great. This was really, really interesting to listen to. And um, I guess the main reason why I kind of wanted to ask this was because um, when I'm reading these debates and somebody says you're a biological female or biological male to like a trans person um, where it's not what they um, what they are mm -hmm. that I, I want to just feel confident to think that's rubbish they are biologically like so, so a trans woman is biologically yeah. female in like at least uh, some respects so, like the important respects I guess. I so think. It, yeah, if am you, I right to, to think that and to think it's if so? I guess how I'd view it is: if someone's like, "Are you?" They'll be like, "You're biologically male," and my correct, my real answer is basically all that just stuff that I just said to you, and that's like the abstract. And if you let me rant, I'll talk for eight hours. But like, <laughs> that's that's the true answer. But often, in a lot of situations, you are forced into this. Uh, binary. Like, if we were arguing the law, it's like, well, the law only considers two character, you know, two possible values. Well, you could easily make the case, at least for some trans people, that they've changed enough of their sex characteristics that if you were forced to put it into a percentage against your will, then it only makes sense to, because they've gone past the fifty percent line to put them into the other category, um, unless well, you just start. In the yeah, go well, ahead. and the point that that people think that bio biology is unchangeable, which we we've, we've oh, demonstrated is false, and the law is also changeable. So, like both of these mm -hmm. factors that give them the basis of their argument can be changed. And I think like we're advocating for like, yeah, yeah. So it's like okay, but biology, uh, you can't change your biology. Okay, but we can. We can take hormones and we can get <laughs> surgery, and that changes our biology. Okay, but but you can't yeah. change, but but the law says you have to be male or female. Okay, but we can change the law to say that those yeah. aren't the only two categories. We can change and the law so, like, so it's more correct. Yeah, yeah. So we can change all these things that are supposedly immutable, and and you'll hear Katie uh, and I um, and Arden and a lot of people on on Twitter uh, address the the claim frequently that this ends up going towards like a a sexed soul, as Katie likes to. <laughs> To call it. Yeah. it was like like the your like this immutable part of you that will forever remain your assigned sex at birth, which like we have no demonstration of of such a thing because if you change any of these other factors, okay, yeah, you were still assigned whatever at at birth, um, but it, it just ends up being such a nebulous uh, assignment, and, and they have such a desire to to pin you down to one of these categories but all of these are very uh dynamic categories and and i i think that's something too we need to consider these as less being static things and like all of it's very dynamic i think um one of my favorite mm -hmm. like idiot things is when people say you can't change your biology because i know what they're trying to say they're trying to say trans people don't exist or aren't real or are bullshit mm -hmm. they're trying to say you can't change sex they've tried to step back and like make it more general and in so it's even more stupid like because already i can say well you don't have a binary definition of sex it doesn't make any sense to claim that 
you know, you're already wrong, but you can't change your biology? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, have you never had medicine? Have you never eaten a sandwich? Have <laughs> yeah. you never burped? Like, all of these things are changing your biology to some degree and some... Biology is literally change. Like, you could easily describe biology as, like, the study of change. It, change over time is the only thing biology does. Yeah, and if anything, you can't not change your biology because your biology is in a constant state of flux from before you're born to after you're dead. And the stupidest thing you could possibly say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but don't all your yeah. cells kind of get renewed like on a yearly basis or something like that? Well, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure what the rate is, but it certainly can change. And also, um, oh, this is, I'm in danger of ranting off. I, I shan't rant off too long extra. Uh, just one little comment. One thing that I found really interesting, which is just tangentially related to this, is one of the things you could say as a percentage is you could theoretically look at every single cell in your body. You could freeze time, look at every single cell in your body and look at the sex chromosomes. And obviously the majority of the cells in your body don't have sex chromosomes or aren't human cells. But when I say obviously, sorry, the majority of the, your human cells in your body are red blood cells and the majority of the cells in your bodies are actually bacteria. But if we look at the non-red blood cell and non-bacteria cells and we look at all of the sex chromosomes, <clears throat> We could go through and we could do a percentage and we could say this person is 100% XY, but lots of people aren't 100% that. They look, you can get the mosaic where someone is born with a certain percentage of their body XX and a certain percentage X, XY, for example, is one of the possible combinations. But also, interestingly, um, there is, uh, if you were to do a percentage of someone's body and uh, it was, say, a cis woman who had given birth to a boy, even after the boy has gone and become a, a own person, an individual entity, some of the cells in that woman's body are now XY as like a, a mm -hmm. remnant of this pregnancy. I don't know if that's always the case. Um, I don't know that much about it. But suddenly, even because people are like, you can't change your chromosomes. And obviously, the first answer to that is, why the hell would I want to change my chromosomes? Even if that was possible, I wouldn't do it because it doesn't affect my life at all. But secondly, like, well, you can't, you, I mean, you can, like, not in an important way. No one's going to yeah. say you're no longer a woman because you gave birth to a boy, but like, they have changed. Like, the, the percentage of which chromosomes you have has, has changed. But anyway. And, uh, and, I, and I, I you can, <laughs> yeah, well, and, and you can transplant an organ from a male to a female or from a female to a male, and like, nobody gives a shit about that. Like, tell these gender criticals, like, to go look for everybody that's ever received an organ transplant and verify that they received the transplant from the correct sex. And, and, well, <laughs> if you're trans, like, are you going to get the right liver from somebody? Like, nobody, nobody <laughs> tests for that. So it's, it's uh, well, completely actually, there's one yeah. thing you're wrong there about Ben, which is, Gender critical law says that if males get female blood, they will die. So yeah. actually, <laughs> they already have an yeah. answer for this, <laughs> and it is it is yeah, impossible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, facts be damned, but they have an answer at least. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, mm -hmm. Julia, this is a really good topic, and please just call in again with the same question and let me talk about it even more yeah. because. <laughs> Katie and likes then, listening. To it was amazing. I learned so much <laughs> again today like every time i listen to you i learn lots of stuff and it's just really cool so thank you so much wicked um yeah thanks julia we'll talk to you again in the future um yeah. i would just like to take a moment before we move on to our next caller to thank our amazing call screener who this week is if i'm reading the american date correctly 1 11 24 um is Jess from Canada. Thank you very much, Jess, for making this show possible. And thank you also for all of the mods in chat and everyone in chat, but particularly the mods, because they are deleting your comments every time you say Ben is the best host. Thank you very much, mods, <laughs> for your hard work. It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, Ben is the best host. That is the most correct <laughs> thing you've said all day, Katie. <laughs> Uh, I didn't mean it. Um, <laughs> would you like to go on to the next call? Uh, I am ready for this next yeah. one. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. We are going to talk to Ivan in Germany, who wants to talk about my favorite person, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Germany is representing Ivan. today in the calls. I know, Germany's showing up. 
Ivan, what do you have for us? Are you there? Are you on mute, Ivan? Have you accidentally put the phone down and gone to the toilet and you are frantically racing back to the headset right now? I hope we get to talk about Ricky Gervais. I hope you're there. We can't hear you. We'll give you another couple of seconds. And if not, we're going to move on to a different caller. Ivan, we're going to return you to the call, to the queue, because we can't hear you if you're talking. Please try and sort out your audio issues, because I really want to talk about Ricky Gervais. <clears throat> uh, well, I actually do. I actually do want to talk about Ricky Gervais. Uh, I would say that sarcastically. But anyway, instead, we won't be talking to Ivan. Ben, are you ready for this other call? <laughs> let's, let's. It's not a it. German caller. It. It's not a German caller. Okay, no, we're going to talk to. <clears throat> we're going to talk to Milo from Malta, oh. uh, who spoke to Matt a few weeks ago about pronouns. Um, Milo, you, what do you have to say? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello? Yes. Hello. I can hear you. Hello. Milo, can you, can hear, you us? hear us? That's the question. Hello? Hello? Oh, no. Can you Hello. Hear me? We can Hi. hear you. Milo, give us your thing. You want to talk about Matt Dillahunty and yeah. pronouns? Uh, yeah. Um, sorry. Just give me a second. Milo is being eaten yeah. by a I'm, robot. I'm at work. Can you hear me well? The robots have taken over yep. Malta. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. So, um, That's okay, okay. Uh, I I had a, a conversation with Mandela, and uh, I just want to say that I think that my argument, I couldn't get to the point of my argument. I feel like it was derailed, and uh, at the very end, uh, uh, he may, I think he needed the time to get uh, resort to ad hominem and just shut me down. I, I kind of feel that was uh, what happened. Well, um, Milo, that's cool, but we're not a, my, uh, 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 my Milo, argument. hang on. Milo, that's, that's fine. And if I'm you sorry? have beef with Matt, that's, fu that's fine. If you have beef with Matt, that is fine. You can have beef with Matt. We're not the Matt complaint line. How about you present your argument to <laughs> us and we can review it and then Thank we you. can deal without doing whatever Matt does. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we can be, you know, a totally different thing. Maybe we'll do different ad homs. Anyway, of go course. for it, Milo. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Sorry about that. So, yeah, I, I mean, uh, it's just that I, I, I've been thinking um, that um, I, I do not totally agree with having to ask uh, people their pronouns each and every time and in every situation. Um, not necessarily just in your show, but um, uh, whoever and, and on whatever uh, and at every time. That's a bit of my case. Um, I feel like, I mean, I'm not against, like, for example, uh, if you were born uh, XY and uh, identify by other people as male, for example, and later on you, you want to change your pronouns, uh, that's okay. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, follow suit. But um, uh, if my question, if, if you allow me to make... Milo, uh, sorry to make, interrupt. Uh, you sorry to interrupt. What is, Milo, um, your yes. internet connection has suddenly got really bad and you sound like you're being eaten by a robot again. Are you on Wi-Fi? Can you get like a better internet connection? Because it's kind of, we're struggling to hear what you're saying here. I'll try. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on Wi-Fi. Uh, will it give me a second to go back to mobile then? Uh, yeah, try that maybe because it's uh, it's very jumpy and uh, jittery, and it's going to be hard to have a conversation. Okay. Okay, it's going to take a second to, to change uh, antennas. Give give it. You second. can indeed. Um, and that sounds a lot better yeah. just then. It's, it did sound a little better then. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me better? Yeah, I think yes. so. So just just before you carry on, I guess. Okay. So you said. I don't think it's that I have to give pronouns every time. Do you? 
Do you give pronouns every time? Like, I mean, when you call into the show, we ask for your pronouns so we know, you know, how to refer to you. But I like I when I go to the shop, I don't say my pronouns. When I, you know, mm. go to a wedding, I don't really say my pronoun. I don't really say my pronouns hardly ever. I say it if I was to call into a show or if someone asked me how I wanted to be referred to, or maybe if I was meeting new people who would do it. I don't know. Is that does that happen in Malta? Do you have to give your pronouns at the bus stop and stuff? No, I mean, I, I don't think that's something that uh, uh, nowadays happens necessarily in everyday life all around the world. But uh, that was something that was mentioned. Uh, I mean, I, it may be, uh, I'm sorry for having to go back to the previous discussion, but uh, there was something that was uh, um, that the previous uh, host actually um, um, uh, talked in favor of, of uh, like making it uh, as normal as asking like, hey, how are you doing? How do you identify something like that? I so say. I, I, um, I, I which, don't think that's what the, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to try to I'm not going to straw man the other person because I, I don't know exactly how the other conversation went. But I, I think there's a mixed context here. I don't think that's what they meant. By because at least that's not what we mean when we say that we want to normalize um, asking about pronouns and talking about our pronouns. It, we're not saying that you should like in every single conversation with every single person give your pronouns or give your pronouns every time you're asking somebody how they are. This is more akin to asking somebody their name. Like, I, and there yeah. are plenty of social circumstances where I don't tell people my name. Like, I don't tell everybody my name at this at the supermarket. I don't tell everybody my name. Um, like that I just walk past on the street. But if I'm meeting somebody for the first time and I'm going to say, hey, my name is Ben. Um, I use he, him pronouns. Uh, what is your name? And how would you like me to address you? Like that's the context that we see this in. So we want to normalize this as being part of the what is your name conversation and not necessarily the how are you doing conversation. Those conversations can be the same conversation, however. So if you're meeting somebody for the first time, you might ask them how they're doing and also ask them what their name is. But I don't think the host previously was suggesting that you should have to restate your pronouns every time you're asking somebody how they're doing. Um, cause, and, and I don't know that previous conversation, but I think maybe there's some missed, some missed context here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that is taking that a bit too far. Not necessarily like I have already met you and uh, how are you identifying today? No, that's not what I'm saying. I think we can agree uh, it's uh, when meeting somebody like, um, hey, what's your name and how you identify? But um, wouldn't it be better? It's just that um, I understand that. Um, uh, you don't have to associate this uh, pronoun uh, change with uh, dysphoria solely. Like you can uh, not uh, have uh, gender dysphoria and yet you, you would like to change uh, your pronouns, but I think that's, that would be a bit of a too specific uh, example. Uh, I think well, why uh, does that, that maybe why would that matter for the... Yeah. What, why, why does that matter to you what, what their reason is for changing their pronouns? Like, why, why does that affect you at all? No, I mean, I don't have a, a problem with people changing their pronouns. What I'm trying to get at is that, um, I mean, uh, we can go to how uh, we have constructed our languages, uh, like English in this case. Uh, because not every language works the same, um, that uh, you uh, address somebody or somebody else's pronouns based on their outside characteristics. So um, what we normally associate to as being masculine or feminine, the masculine would be like a he, him, and the feminine characteristics as a he, a she, her. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, I think that um, the majority of people uh, doesn't go uh, for this. It doesn't mean that we have to obviate or ignore or ostracize the people that uh, don't follow the, the norm, uh, in a sense. But um, at the same time, uh, I think that even in those cases, 
uh, there shouldn't be much need to uh, to have to specify and go through this protocol. Like, would it, it be better to just have your pronouns uh, be mentioned right the first time without having to ask? It's maybe kind of how I'm, I'm trying to get at. Like, that would be nice. That would be nice. Uh, and that would be an ideal situation where we didn't have to go through this. Uh, it would be, be ideal if we had a language or if we had all languages that accommodated for gender neutrality or accommodated for um, some some variation. But unfortunately, we're not in that situation. So we're kind of dealing with what our options are with what we currently have in society. And so unfortunately, with the way languages are currently built and the way societies currently work, we have to add this additional accommodation in because we can't change the entire world overnight and how society is engaged. So this is something that we've done on a smaller level to try to help kind of drive this bit of social change, but also make people feel more comfortable. But even so, like, yeah, I, I think there's there's an ideal here. But in the meantime, we have a way that we're managing. And I don't think it's too much to ask to have these little pieces of accommodation. It's It's like, it's like if you had a person, um, like for example, society is not very accommodating of people of a lot of different variations, like people who use wheelchairs um, or people who uh, use hearing aids and all those things. Like society is not very accommodating of those things. But imagine if I were to say, well, the most people don't need a wheelchair ramp to get into a building. We should just let them figure it out on their own. We don't need to put the extra work in to put in a wheelchair ramp. Like, we can't do that, right? As a society, that would be seen as cruel and it would be seen as uh, inappropriate to force these people to make their own solution that isn't going to get them anywhere. Um, so I, I think, like, kind of addressing this as, like, it's, it's too much of an in inconvenience to use to keep asking people's pronouns when we could just make the assumption that's kind of like the same thing of I could just assume that everyone's going to not need a ramp. And then the person that needs a ramp just doesn't have one now. Like the amount of work done to make that accommodation is worth is worth it for that person. And even if it's a minority amount of people that need that accommodation, we should still as a society strive to make those accommodations. Does that make sense? And I don't want to prevent Katie from speaking. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that does make sense. And I understand uh, that this is like a courtesy and uh, you want to accommodate language wise in this case. Uh, and for the people with disabilities, I mean, uh, you can just build a ramp next to the stairs. Uh, that's something that I see every day. Uh, but I, uh, what I, uh, what I have an issue with, let's say is that I think I mean, I think we we kind of agree that this is an ideal that we should strive for when we shouldn't have to, like, ask people each and every time or when introducing themselves, uh, their pronouns, an ideal to just uh, have them right the first time. Um, it's just that uh, for me, I feel like uh, having to actually ask them uh, this is like pointing them each and every time, like, hey, so... Uh, you don't seem to, uh, uh, how do you say, like, uh, you don't, um, accommodate, you don't, you don't fall in line with the, with the normal, uh, or the usual, um, uh, right. So people. that's why you ask, so now I have to that's ask why you ask you're, everybody you're, the same you're question. out of the, of the norm. Milo, no, but th here's the problem, man. If you're only asking the people that, if you're only asking the people that, don't conform to gender norms that is a problem because yeah then you're pointing it out that somebody doesn't conform with the norms but that's why you should be extending this courtesy to everybody because you don't know again you can't make the assumption so you don't know when someone's going to fit that criteria of needing the accommodation so this should be an across the board accommodation is what we're saying and it sounds like um you you don't think it's worth it to do that because it's is it too much work for you to ask? Like, I, I'm confused about why this no. is such, so much of a hassle for you. I to mean, it's, it's just a question. It's just a question. But uh, I, I just think that for people who don't align with the norm, I think it's actually more troubling for them to have this pointed out each and every time. No, but it's like, not. It's uh, not if they're treating everybody in the at. same way. Hang on. Hang on. I'm sorry. Hang on, guys. Hang on, guys. Hang on. Hang on. This is my first time canceling. I have a point. I have a point. 
Milo, are you a trans person? Yes. You are. No, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, because I I just feel like if if you want to say, oh, it inconveniences me, that's cool. We can hear your opinion. But if you're saying I think this is bad for other people, when you're not one of those people, and generally talking to trans people, they don't seem to be having the opinion you do. I uh, it doesn't really. I feel like it's not your opinion to have, is it? But you could say, I don't like doing this. And I'm like, okay, cool, let's discuss that. But if you say, I don't mind doing it, but I think it's bad for trans people. It's like, well, who do you think is arguing for this to happen in the first place? I don't know. Like, um, I, I don't I don't accept that. Like, it's like you're giving someone else's opinion. But I, I think I want to say just one other thing while I, while I have the mic. I am so fucking over pronouns. Like, I have spent easily three orders of magnitude more time arguing about whether we should use proper pronouns or whatever than i have just using people's pronouns like who gives a fucking shit just like someone's just like hi you know this is my name these are my pronouns i'm like wicked katie she her done like on with it let's now we can be friends Let, no, it's just so unimportant but instead like not not venting just at you milo but i i do not understand why cis people need to have hundreds of hours worth of conversations about all these like what happens in this situation when someone says a pronoun what happens about this part like who cares just do it <laughs> like i mean does it does it matter like who who in the world has been so inconvenienced by pronouns that it's worth them like arguing about it or losing their friends and family in an argument about it or like making it their entire personality i i don't know i feel like as far as trans rights go, I can see why people are arguing about sports and prisons. I do not understand why anyone cares about pronouns. Like, oh yeah, pronouns, we totally made them up. They t literally just made them up for no reason at all. We just decided to match pronouns to genitals. And then we're like, oh, that was stupid, wasn't it? Let's just do what we want in pronouns. Cool. End the conversation. There's no irrational argument against that. Who cares? Anyway, the reason I wanted to say that is because I think... <laughs> We can fit in some other callers that aren't talking about pronouns. And Milo, I don't want to put you down or say that this isn't interesting. But for me in this moment, personally, <laughs> I want to talk about Ricky Gervais instead. So I'm sorry, Milo. I'm sorry, Ben, to cut you both off. Um, that's, no, that's fine. Can that's I just fine. Like, try and round up my, my argument? Like, I, I think you can round off a, your argument I, I understand if it fits where you're in one saying, minute. Where you're coming from. Um, yeah. And this is, uh, yeah, it's uh, such a minor inconvenience, just a question. I, I, even if a dad, it's an inconvenience. I, I think it's a right. Um, but um, I just, I'm, I'm just trying to describe, uh, I mean, just around that. Uh, so I, I just think that it's like trying to give a differential uh, um, um, uh, treatment to people and to try not to make a differential, we are extending this to everybody. But at the same time... But the thing time, is, uh, trans people uh, are so disadvantaged in terms of treatment in society that the idea of giving us preferential treatment seems like a joke. It's like, well, okay, oh, yeah, you're going out your way to call me the right thing. Oh, I'm really sorry. But also, cis people are, like, trying to remove all my human rights and are, like, banning people like me from having access to healthcare at all and are murdering us, like, for no reason. So, like, I, I just... I know it's a minor inconvenience, but I just don't care. Like, I just, I just do not care. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Milo. I think uh, call in for two weeks' time when I'm not here <laughs> and argue with Arden and someone mm. about pronouns. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, everyone. Yeah. I'm being really dismissive. Milo, I did enjoy your call. I did appreciate you calling in, <laughs> but like. Oh, we're all, uh, we're, we're we didn't use it's a pronounce now, and we didn't use any ad hominem. So I'm going to use I one. Hope Milo, you, right. you are a frog yeah. herder. I don't know what that means, but I've decided to call you it, and therefore <laughs> you've been ad hommed by the Transatlantic <laughs> Calling Show. <laughs> anyway, okay. thank you very much for calling in. Well, thank you for Bye. your time. Sorry, I, I need to butt in as a producer because I went back to that episode <laughs> to clarify what his actual position was. And it wasn't yeah. it wasn't I object to having to say pronouns in every situation ever. His literal exact words were, I don't necessarily agree with having to say pronouns in general. 
in general. <laughs> that is like the opposite fucking claim. So just have I, to. I tell you what, if you're a transphobic cis person and you actually commit to the bit of never saying pronouns, I support you. Like literally don't say I or we or us or them. Like just completely cut them out of your vocabulary. I don't care. Go for it. But if, if you if you just see some pronouns, then you're a hypocrite and I, I do care. Anyway, yeah. let's talk to Ivan in Germany who has fixed his audio issue. Ivan in Germany, please save us from the pronoun discussion. What do you have to say? Are we back on? You are back. Can you we hear me now? Hey. Yes, we can. Yay. Okay, good. Thank you. So, uh, first, are you comfortable talking about the tweet? Because I don't want to you know, talking uh, a tweet. Do you, do you say the tweet about the the Rick, Rick's thing about you? Are you comfortable about talking about it? Because I don't want to. Oh yeah, you know. talk about whatever. I'm not actually sure what you're referring to, but um, has he tweeted about me? Oh, <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a old one. The the the, the oh, okay. toilet one. Oh okay yeah, 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 yeah I know what you're referring to yeah yeah okay go for it. Yeah, are you fine with that? Yeah. All right. So, uh, well, the the thing is that I can't really wrap my hand or head around that because he seems or seemed as a quite a decent guy. You know, his comedy is I don't know smart. Uh, he when he makes arguments about God, they are pretty logical and good. He cares about animal protection, which is a good thing. He actually said on stage he does support trans rights in real life. He actually did that. He's lying. So but yeah, okay. I, okay, well th that's what I because I I heard you saying that he's a jerk. I kind of hope he's not, but I like you and trust your judgment. That's why I wanted to talk about. It. <laughs> right. You know, I, I yeah, I was I grew up listening to him. I like his comedy. I like a lot of his comments that doesn't that they don't have to do with comedy. But then there's that tweet and it just doesn't fit. Yeah, so I mean for, for anyone who doesn't know, uh Ricky Gervais, I guess he's like an international superstar, but he's a British comedian and he I think he's like hosted the Oscars or something. I don't know. I'm sure Americans vaguely know who he is. He wrote the original office that you guys ripped off. Mm -hmm. and made loads more money on but um mm -hmm. he yeah he's an atheist uh he at least used to be a skeptic uh he's like an animal rights activist as well and he puts that in his comedy and he's also like team jk rowling um ge he's gender critical um and that came out in a weird way maybe a couple of years ago maybe even just last year i don't know it all kind of merges into one but um, one of the founders or one of the members of LGB Alliance uh, tweeted something about how, specifically about me calling me a man and saying I should be banned from the toilet and Ricky Gervais liked it. And then I commented on it and then, you know, it kind of escalated a little bit. He had already, Ricky Gervais had already preemptively blocked me. Like I clicked on, I saw someone was like, oh, did you see like this tweet? And I went to go look and I couldn't see it. And I was like, what the fuck? And then they were having this little discussion about me in the uh, in the replies to this tweet saying I was a man and should be banned from the toilet. And Ricky Gervais didn't reply to any of it, as far as I saw. But he had been liking loads of these w comments about me and trans people and like weird personal attacks as well. Like not just like I think trans people shouldn't should be banned from the toilet or whatever, but like Katie Montgomery's, you know, this kind of stuff. And I was just like, this is so surreal that. He's blocked me. Like he must have clicked onto my profile to do that, right? To like click and then click block. So he at least for some point in his life acknowledged who I was and knew who I was, and then was liking these tweets like specifically about me, uh, saying I should be banned from the toilet. So it's not even like this kind of like so so to kind to kind of bring this into your question about him being seeming like a decent guy, um, at, at least to some people, I guess. There's this kind of uh, sliding scale of how transphobic someone is. And there is obviously the kind of people who will shout slurs at you on the street and try and fight you. And then there are people who, you know, they'll respect you and stuff, but maybe they're just a little bit worried about leaving their impressionable teenage 
kid near you in case you tell them about being trans, they convert yourself. You know, that is still a transphobic position, but they're different different perspectives, different different degrees of transphobia. And I guess there are a lot of people like Ricky Gervais's generation who have never really encountered a trans person and they grew up with trans people. The only encounter with trans people was them being like the butt of a joke. Oh, it's like, you know, there's one scene in every comedy film from the 90s where a uh, trans person, next joke. And then all of a sudden it's like trans people are the new civil rights movement and they're like, what the fuck, where are these people come from? I don't get it. And what? Why should we have to change the whole world around for these people I've never even heard of before? And, and that is kind of, you know, a transphobic position. But I can understand people having that position to some degree. And if you're like a cis person, and you know nothing about it, and you're like, well, why are trans people making all this fuss? And then I said to you, oh, well, did you know um, that, for example, in the UK, they've proposed changing the Equality Act to remove my protections from sexism at work? I would assume any rational person who isn't a dickhead who has never really encountered trans issues before would be like, oh, okay. They might even be like, really? Because that sounds pretty crazy. Can you show me the evidence? And I'd be like, yeah, here we go. Here's the letter that the head of the Equalities Commission wrote to the government. Uh, they wrote to spell it out in black and white. And you'd be like, well, shit, that is pretty bad. Uh, I just feel like, you know, that's the, the normal position. However, when you're like a, a celebrity, if you make any kind of public signal at all in any direction about any topic, then suddenly there's going to be a reaction to that. And if you are, you know, if you're like, a, I don't know how old Ricky Gervais is, 60, 50, something, whatever, he's older than me, some, some degree he's older than me. If you're just like a random 60 year old man at the pub and you're like, you know, you overhear me talking, they're like, really? That that uh, They wouldn't try and take away your human rights and be like, well, actually, you're wrong, and we can have this little one-to-one -one discussion. If instead you're like a giga celebrity like Ricky Gervais, and you see some tweet saying like, oh, they're lying, they're not trying to take away rights, and you're like, well, that sounds true, I'll click on, I'll click like on that. Suddenly it's like, people are going to see that, and you're going to have a big reaction. And pe often when people are challenged, their natural thing to do is to bunker down, to not want to change their mind, and to look for people who agree with them and who will reassure them on that. And the thing is, and I think that this is something the skeptic community does address, but I guess we should be more clear about and talk about more is just because you are able to uh, use your skeptical skills and analysis, an ability to rash be rational in one context. That doesn't mean you're like liberated from prejudice and you can do it in every context. It is amazing to watch people, like I, I see this all the time, they will see a pattern of argumentation where it's like, you know, some really obvious thing that you see creationists do all the time where you're like, can you prove God? And they're like, can you disprove my God? And it's like, I know this pattern of argument. This is, you're making a claim and you have no evidence for it. And when I ask you to give me the evidence, because you don't have any evidence, what you do is you turn it around and you demand that I prove your claim force. This is a, you know, a classic logical fallacy. It's, you know, trying to disprove a claim. It, it's just wrong. And when they're talking about religion, they'll be like, oh yeah, I've seen this a thousand times. And then all of a sudden, the topic is no longer about religion and it's about trans people and their brain just, melts and suddenly they're the ones doing this or well, you can't prove it's wrong and it's like well i i thought you were a skeptic i've seen you i've seen you making the opposite argument and like shooting this down as logical fallacy like in person like watching you do this like live uh, about religious people about like homophobes and suddenly it's about a new topic and your brain just turns up and i just think this is something humans do P people have so many prejudices and when you you don't always notice when you're acting on them and when you're faced with a new thing every single time your reaction is gonna be to bunker down and to try not to change your mind and to find people who are going to validate you and surely the more times you dig out of that the more likely you are to notice it or whatever but also the more you are surrounded by people already who 
hold that position, the less likely you are to change your mind. And I mean, I don't know who Ricky Gervais hangs out with, but certainly the British like media class is really like homogenous, just bullshit anti-trans position. I would imagine that a lot of his at least British like celebrity friends are the have hold similar views where they're just transphobic. And so they're the people he's talking to. He's probably never talked to a trans person. I'm I'm kind of making excuses for this, but this his position isn't just like it's a similar thing with J.K. Rowling. Lots of people. I don't know if this is still so true in 2024, but like when J.K. Rowling came out with her thing in 2020, so many people were like, in my mind, she is a good person. She is a nice person. She's a you know a writer of children's books. They have all these kind of stereotypes for that. You know, she's done some charity work. And so she's written this thing and she says she's just concerned about women. And that's a reasonable thing to be concerned about women. And she's concerned about children. You know, she's worried about you trying to... I totally will give her the benefit of the doubt. And, and then you see all these trans people saying she's a transphobic extremist. She wants to ruin our lives. And you're like, it just that just can't be true. But the thing is, if you, you know, get rid of these pre-assumptions and stuff and actually go and look at who she's promoting, what she's saying, where she's putting her money and, you know, the positions she's supporting, the, the people she is supporting are full on, totally get rid of trans people from society extremists. That that famous like lunch photo, I don't know if you've seen it, but there was some photo she had with a load of the other top gender criticals and like all of the other people in the room had said things like trans people don't exist or we need to get rid of trans people's rights or they've signed some declaration saying we need to eliminate transgenderism and stuff. And it's like, these are the peers that she's holding and hanging out with. And that's been her position for ages. In fact, well before she came out as gender critical, literally for like years, like two plus years, the entire British trans community at least knew she was transphobic because she was following all of the major transphobes on Twitter, all of them, the most extreme ones, and like no trans people. And that's just when they're following one or two, when they're following the famous, like if someone follows Matt Walsh, it's kind of meaningless because loads of people follow him. But when they're following like some specific low tier, like C tier YouTuber with like 3000 followers or whatever, and then the whole thing has been transphobic, you, you start seeing the red flags and you start seeing what stuff they're liking. And I mean, from what I've seen from Ricky Gervais, it's just the same. He, you know, he hasn't necessarily done some kind of manifesto saying, yeah, he hasn't done a Michael Knowles or whatever his name is and gone on stage and said, we need to eradicate transgenderism. But he's made it pretty clear in his <laughs> jokes that uh, he doesn't really respect trans people at all. <clears throat> and they're really ignorant jokes that you know, you can make good jokes about trans people, but these are jokes made by someone who doesn't know anything about trans people. Um, but also, the people he's promoting and supporting are extremists, you know, full on wackos, the, the kind of people who don't think trans people should have any rights or think trans people should not exist or that we should all be forced through conversion therapy. And and I can't say what his view is. I don't know if, if you actually said to him, this is what conversion therapy is. Do you want to to trans people? Sure, I mean, maybe he'd say absolutely not, or maybe he would support it. I literally have no idea. But the thing is, when you're like standing shoulder to shoulder with or defending the views of or supporting in some way, even just by liking like members of LGB Alliance, like LGB Alliance have made it very clear that they want conversion therapy to be mandatory on trans kids. And like they've signed a declaration saying they don't think trans people should have any legal rights at all. Um, and if you're just like supporting this stuff, I mean, it, you're more transphobic than you let on. The people, no one's gonna, well, some people do, but if you're an international celebrity, you're not gonna go out and be like, I don't support trans rights. You're gonna be like, I support trans rights. I know trans, I care about trans people. I have trans friends, but I just think they've gone too far with this woke ideology or whatever, however you want to describe it. And that's a PR thing. Like it's a way of concealing your power level as as like the sort of far right term for it, where you want to try and sound reasonable so you don't say your full position. Um 
but then people can defend you better and obviously it works i mean loads of people i don't know how to what degree people still are loads of people defended jk rowling like normal people who weren't really otherwise transphobic just could not believe that she could be an extremist and she had not said anything like she hadn't said you know any slurs or anything so it just doesn't doesn't process but the thing is she is a wacko like she's full-on lost her mind gender critical no different to graham linehan really i don't know if ricky gervais is that bad but um he is at least at the position that like the fact he was liking those tweets about me wasn't a shock for the fact that it was an anti-trans position it was that it was personal and if it had been someone else i would have been like oh yeah you know i already knew he was gender critical like that was already clear to me it's already clear that he supports the gender critical movement and you know maybe if you pinned him down on actual positions if you went through like this wdi de declaration thing like that lists out all of their things i said you know you were to go through and say do you actually support the idea of like a complete ban of all trans women using all women's facilities in all contexts maybe he would support that maybe he wouldn't but the thing is this kind of general support the gender critical position like that's absolutely where he is uh I wasn't surprised about that at all. That was a long ramble. Um, yeah. Oh, no. And, and I apologize to put a damper on the party. Uh, I'm going to have to leave in like two minutes to go to work. So. Okay. Um, oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope it's okay if I just like. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. Katie Unless can you have a thing. Carry a show by herself. Unless you want to wanna no. do a comment on this topic. I don't, know. Uh, I don't have much to say. I think Katie covered a lot of it sorry i mean i'm just so done with the floor. i'm done with celebrities <laughs> being shitheads that's really all i'm gonna say um, yeah yeah but i'll catch you all later everybody yeah have fun thanks ben see you soon um oh so, sorry Bye -bye. for sorry to ben for uh taking a call that he didn't have anything to say <laughs> for the last 15 minutes anyway <laughs> ivan i don't know what what do you think to all the stuff said i've said 15 minutes of talking so well, answering to all you said would take a bit, but, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what what I was thinking is, uh, so for example, the specific tweet, uh, it wasn't actually about you not, sh should you should be banned from the, uh, as far as, I, okay, so the shitty things that. was uh, dead naming and misgendering, that's not just, that's just like fucked up and that's, that's it. But the other things, uh, it it said something like um, uh, every time Katie is forced to go to male's bathrooms, she uh, slow, gradually uh, gradually uh, uh, vanishes from existence. Something like that. Which, if you're being a devil's advocate, you could say it's just a comment of how silly it is to actually have gender divided bathrooms, right? Like saying, you know, regardless if you, whatever, you, like you're, you're not going to vanish. You're, if you go here or there, you're still a person, you still exist. Or the topic or quote unquote problem issue still exists. Sure. I mean, the, I, I understand where you're coming from, Ivan. Just, just for everyone, I'll just read out this tweet. So it's from Malcolm Clark from LGB Alliance. And he said, Banning Katie from women's toilets or other spaces isn't about Katie. It's about the comfort and safety of actual women for whom these spaces were created. They were designed to keep men out. Why do trans -wo men insist on thinking everything revolves around them? Um, so I understand that you obviously like Richie Face and want to try and come up with... And I'm, I don't want to feel like I'm insulting you here. I, I understand the kind of hope to be able to reframe this into a position where maybe he just had a different take on it or was coming in from the wrong angle or something i don't think this is a one-off i at the time he was liking a lot of other tweets too i don't have screenshots in here i can't remember them all off the top of my head and the list of them all uh that i had quote tweeted at the time uh has been deleted so i can't look back now Ricky Gervais isn't a one time he's like one weird tweet or he said one dubious thing like in to my to my uh understanding he's a gender critical person we could go and look at the evidence for that perhaps I should do that before saying any more on it 
And I would love for it if he was to come out and say something to the contrary, but he hasn't. I don't think it's complicated. I don't think he's confused about his position. I think he's ignorant. I I also think that potentially, if he were to, you know, if me and him were to talk for a few hours in person, I, and I'm probably naive on this because I think this is about a lot of people, that maybe he would realise that his position is wrong, and could come round to believing the right position, but the forum for that is not Twitter, and he's never going to do that. I don't think for anyone. And I think that the problem with this is like, you know, Dave Chappelle and others as well, they might have, they might be capable of being reasonable, but the, the landscape they're in is they are surrounded by yes men already. So that's already difficult for them to do anything. And they already like one of the issues is Ricky Gervais has already got this pattern in his mind of, things like blasphemy and being cancelled are similar. And, you know, he's spoken out against the idea of, <clears throat> um, you know, like something like blasphemy. Oh, you can't say that because it offends my God. And then from his point of view, you have people saying, you can't say that because it offends trans people. And that just looks the same to him. And his natural response is I should be able to offend anyone I like and all these people trying to bring in blasphemy laws about religion are trying to ruin people's lives are trying to control society and that's why you often see um the religious right try and even though they're the ones doing the fucking blasphemy laws trying to sell it to <clears throat> people like Ricky, Ricky Gervais as if suddenly the trans people are trying to bring uh, blasphemy laws in or something like that um so it's very hard to get through to them to explain that isn't what's happening. But because cis people totally control the media on this, they totally dominate the narrative on this. Um, you know, that trans people have no positions of power in the media or in government or in the conversation at all. 99.9% .9 of all conversations about trans rights are just between cis people. How are we ever going to get through to explain like, you know, I mean, about this tweet, like, banning me from women's toilets isn't about me. I mean, it does affect me, doesn't it? Like, that's, that's, uh, it would be just to even, just, even just have this conversation, I'd be like, you know, you've liked this tweet <laughs> saying, uh, banning me from the toilet at work isn't about me, but like, it would affect me and it doesn't actually affect anyone else. Like, we could have that discussion. I would love to have that discussion with him and maybe he'd be capable of, capable of being rational about it. I'm not confident that that's ever going to happen. I think he's going to double and triple down. And I think that that's probably the trajectory for the majority of people in this position. I'm just say that from watching so many of them, like, you know, Graham Linehan is an extreme example. JK Rowling's quite an extreme example, but I don't know once you post transphobia, you don't go back. <laughs> it just consumes people. It becomes their whole personality. I don't know. I, I, obviously, I'm I'm being quite negative about it here, but <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't know what, if you have anything else to add, Ivan. Uh, well, okay, uh, not about Ricky because <clears throat> I do have things to say, but it would like it's a it's a discussion for a coffee. <laughs> but uh, comedy in general, for example, like yeah. uh, a joke, his. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Uh, when he said he doesn't like women, well, actually, uh, the, the, the old-fashioned ones with the Chinese, but the new ones with the penises, they're great. So it, you could take, think it's a good joke or a bad joke, doesn't really matter. But he used the term women with penises, with, which I think might be positive in a sense that you're getting this term into the, in, into the public. Your people are starting using it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess, but I think really, like, if we want to be really lame and analyze the joke, I feel like the joke is that he's trying to say, like, these new women with penises, they're not so great, or, where, or you know, however he's saying it. It That's part of the joke, that that term is jarring to the audience, that, like, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know, there's always multiple ways to interpret art. But the point here is that, I mean, that joke's fine. Uh, it, I mean, it is, it, 
it is you know based on transphobia but like some jokes are um based upon irrational prejudice and it's one that you could potentially make or a better version of um a similar punchline in a way that wasn't garbage it the, the problem is is just um and maybe i haven't watched the ricky gervais special that you're talking about i do know that one particular joke i do remember it and just only because i've just seen this dave chappelle thing more recently is a lot of it's just really lazy it's just like the the thing is oh trans people are new and trans people are weird it's not like you know it, it's almost like being a stand-up comedian who's never been on an airplane and then going onto a stage and trying to make jokes about airplanes you're like oh they're so weird aren't they it's just like a tube in the sky like oh so it's so funny and weird it's just like this isn't it's not really a joke i mean to other people who haven't been on airplanes maybe this is funny stuff but like i've been on one and it's like I mean, maybe I can analyze something that you said here and we could say, oh, maybe it's not that bad. Or but like, it's just kind of, you know, the, the whole point, the whole issue here is, is it's just like jokes about something you don't understand through the lens of a heavy straw man and a lot of prejudice. Um, you know, we can pick individual jokes and I could say that whether they're fine or not, I'd, that's cool but i think the the point is is that you know this his lens that he's looking at this through is he doesn't really support trans people's rights he's fine liking a tweet saying i should be banned from the toilet and saying that women's spaces were designed to keep me out and i me thinking otherwise is me insisting the world revolves around me i mean yeah i don't know I, I I don't want to give this kind of. In fact, I hate the idea of you can't joke about trans people. I think that would be terrible. Um, but you know, pretending that all jokes are equal is is kind of silly. I'm not saying you're doing that. Um, it's just it's just a case of like you know, it's possible to make jokes about disabled people. It's possible to make jokes about black people. But like the best people making jokes about disabled people are disabled people. And they can push the edges. They can say stuff that's offensive. They can they can make you feel uncomfortable. They can say stuff that's out there. And it's because they know the topic so well and they've experienced it so well that they can get really good observational stuff. They know what the audience feels like. They can bounce off the room and stuff. If you don't know anything about trans people and you're liking tweets saying they should be banned from the toilets, like the jokes aren't informed and intelligent. It's just saying oh aren't trans people bad to a room of people who think that already i i don't know <laughs> i may maybe we've exhausted this topic i don't know i feel like i've talked this about this forever i feel like i could talk about everything forever but do you have anything more ivan <laughs> or we'll uh, wrap this up no nah, just 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 yeah just to close it uh, uh, like in insult from from okay, I'm not a trans person, so it's not for me to say. I'll say my opinion. It does, but it doesn't mean shit. Uh, if you are misgendering, if you are dead naming, that's insulting. End of discussion. If you're just saying a joke that's in poor taste and somebody doesn't like it, well, fuck it. That's how I yeah. see it. But on the yeah, but on that point, if I have to choose between, you know, following or liking you or Ricky, then you know, it's, it's you every every day of the day of the week. I don't want to. I don't want to make you choose. Like, so I, I I think that it's important this kind of like separate the art from the artist thing to a degree. I, I like metal bands, and lots of them have very shit people. And a very classic example. Don't know if you've heard of them. There's a band called Megadeth, and they're really good. Their first like four albums are like four of the best albums ever made. Um. But the the main guy is a fucking bell end, like in every sense. Like he's politically stupid. He's a prick who can't get on with people. He just says insane stuff. And like he he's even come out with like the idea that Obama staged Sandy Hook, like real wacko stuff. <clears throat> and I couldn't ever support him on a political level or a personal level. But I still like those Megadeth albums. I still think they're incredible, like because they are. And if you like Ricky Gervais's older comedies or or even his modern stuff 
I'm sure he's got jokes that are funny that aren't about trans people. Um, that's cool. I don't want to make you feel like you know you can only like me or him, but I think it, you also just need to be prepared to also understand that he has not just passingly accidental garbage views on trans people, but that he is like a full on gender critical. Um, and that's just the reality of it, and it's complicated and messy. And maybe I also have a garbage opinion that you don't support, and that Ricky DeVace does. And then in that case, that's also cool for you to take the like flip side view on those things. But when it comes to trans rights, <laughs> I think I'm right and he's wrong. So in that topic, it'd be good if you if you were to take you that might side. Be a bit more informed. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit, yeah, you know. When we want to talk about being a billionaire and how the difficulties you have, I can't, you know, he, he's got that. <laughs> he knows that one first. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, okay, thank thanks you, for Katie, for uh, talking. That's all right. Thanks for the call and um, thanks for the topic. Thanks for fixing your sound and we'll hear from you in the future. Arden, what do you want to do? Do you want to... We still got calls in the line. Do you or do you want to? Do you want to call that? It's totally up to you. I did send you a message if you want to look at it real quick on WhatsApp. Uh, not in the group chat, but to the. Uh, thank God Ben has gone. I'm so sick of him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Um. Oh, okay. I see. Uh, I think let's take this caller next week. Call us still on the line. I would love to talk to you, but I think we're going to just have to uh, do next week. I am on next week. I would love to hear from you. And so is Arden. So you should call in next time. Um, let's do some super chats, if that is okay with you, Arden. So I'm going to read out all of them. So if there are any votes for Ben, then fuck you. You wasted your money. Um, <laughs> $5 from Gayest Husky. Um, oh, that That's an interesting idea. I wonder if, like, can you... Can you do a percentage of gayness for all huskies, or is it multidimensional? Um, a verse from my scripture and sincere religious belief. Who's the biggest? Who's the bigger fool? Bathroom stall bindle, lovers caress Bailey, or kids book for Foster? <laughs> spelt wrong. Forstater. Um, these are three characters from uh, the British gender critical ensemble. Um, I, if the biggest fool of those is definitely Alison Bailey, I think. Uh, anyway, thank you. Next. <clears throat> uh, five pounds from Sean Isherwood. Time for some maths. <laughs> the number of perfect numbers is less than... Oh, the number of perfect numbers less than N is less than a positive constant C times the square root of N. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I can't imagine that one enough to feel like it makes sense. But yeah, cool. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Sean has like literally an unlimited amount of um, maths facts, and I, I enjoy them. Four ninety nine dollar runes from Sarah Wilson. Thank you for donating your time. <laughs> get wrecked. Dr. Ben, get your cats out, everyone. Um, Poppy just ran past. Thanks, Sarah. I appreciate you, even if Ben doesn't. 100, oh no, Naresh is here, oh god. <laughs> Thanks, Naresh! 100 check crowns, very kindly from Naresh. I'm a few hours back from Grandpa's funeral. Oh no, gosh, sorry, Naresh, I shouldn't have dunked on you. I'm really sorry to hear that. So any show is a good distraction, but you two are a treat. Thanks for promoting empathy and reason, and making the world a better for those who need it. Uh, thanks for being in the chat, sorry for jabbing at you when I saw your name. Uh, we always appreciate you here, Naresh, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't poke. Um, I hope that this show has helped you, um, you know, relax and zone out a bit. Uh, sorry to hear about your loss. See, I'm always telling you guys that Katie's a terrible person and, and you don't believe me, but there it is right there. <laughs> Pro tip 21 wants to be a streamer. Don't just read the first word and then react. <laughs> Five dollars from Ben the Bee. Got to give money for a metalhead Takis host. 
First time watching a show with Katie on, and I've been missing out. Yes, you have, and so have I. Thank you very much, Ben the Bee, the best of the Bens we have encountered this evening so far. <clears throat> it's kind of wild to me that someone could be watching Takis for a while and just be seeing you for the first time since the show's like I almost know. three years old now. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, you should go back and watch all the episodes with me on. 499 from Ben Nine Lives. Wow, there's loads of Bens going on. There's a Ben Knight. I wait, actually, suspicious. Our Ben disappears and suddenly we get loads of Ben super chats. <laughs> Best duo to date, uh, Katie and Dr. Ben, I get wrecked hard and have taught me so much. Thanks for preventing f from being an embarrassing bigot. Oh, well, I'm great to hear that we've helped you in your life, Ben. $20 from Water Lily. In May 21, I believe the show was rather young at that time. The two of you did a show and my little egg finally cracked. Thank you so much. I'm free now and so much happier. I really couldn't thank you enough. That is amazing to hear, Water Lily. I'm I'm pleased that we transed you and converted you to the religion of trans ideology so that you can indoctrinate, indoctrinate others. I'm pleased to hear. Five pounds from Jack Cavey. Graham Linehan has knits. Pass it on. Hashtag Team Katie. <laughs> um, I don't know because that so, sounds like something wants to spend time with him. And I don't know how credible that is. <laughs> Lol. Four ninety nine from Louise Richardson. Hashtag Team Katie. Thank you very much. Determination differs. Some fish actually change. Some reptiles by temperature. Mammals start out female. The mammal style of the email thing, Ben uh, made a video about, and it is not true. Um, but yes, uh, some quite a few different animals, not just fish, but fish for sure, change sex in their lives. And uh, yeah, reptiles, they bury their eggs at different levels, so there are different temperatures, and that determines their sex, which is quite cool. Um, yeah, next. Five dollars from Monkey at a Typewriter. Gervais and Dawkins show us that smart witty people. Yeah, Dawkins is such another good example of someone who is otherwise rational, who's just completely irrational in him. Like Dawkins is a more extreme example because, like Ricky Gervais is, to my knowledge, I don't I don't follow him that well, knowing that well, but he is at least to my understanding an atheist and correct on atheism and then also supports animal rights so is correct on that so he has applied some kind of rational thought to two topics whereas richard dawkins seemed to have only done it to one uh and then just is a generic conservative bell end for everything else and just a reactionary so anyway gervais and dawkins show us that smart witty people can also succumb to fascist nonsense yes they can hashtag team arden but we'll settle for katie <laughs> what <laughs> I love that phrase. Okay. In particular. <laughs> Leet sense from Alyssa. Emily Quinn, intersex activist with CAIS, gave a TEDx talk called What I Learned from Having Balls. <laughs> she said the first doctor she had who understood her condition and did not want to inspect her. Oh, no, that's three out of three. Is there other parts, Arden? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the next one. Uh... <clears throat> okay. Um, genitals was one who came to her college class to teach about trans people. Many doctors don't know how to deal with women with testes, whether intersex or trans. Gender criticals love to say intersex, trans, or I guess intersex and not trans, but don't understand the issues that each group faces. They refuse to believe there's overlap between intersex and trans needs. Blame the assistant to the social media manager. Okay, yeah, like totally agree with Alyssa's point here that um, there are overlaps between trans people and intersex people in some of the prejudice we face and some of the needs we have. Uh, obviously, both groups have different needs and face different prejudices. Um, 
one big issue, for example, is like intersex genital mut mutilation or whatever, where they're like performing surgeries on babies, like literally all the things that the bigoted dickheads accuse trans people of, they're actually doing to intersex people, which is very grim. Um, but there are definitely overlaps and it's this kind of, um, you know, as soon as people don't fit into a binary box, people lose their minds. Like people can't, for some reason, people just love boxes and they love putting things in boxes. I mean, I guess that's humans' brains categorizing. I mean, it's an evolutionary advantage to be able to categorize things, but we just go over the top sometimes and get really upset when things turn out to not fit into boxes. And in different, w in different ways and sometimes the same ways, trans and intersex people just do not fit into a binary model of sex. So yeah, we're going to face similar prejudice when it comes to that. I'd also like to give props to Alyssa for this uh, blame the assistant to the social media manager. I'm pretty sure that's a reference to the American office. Uh, oh, okay. Dwight, Dwight Schrute's character always says like, a, I'm the assistant regional manager and the regional manager goes, no, you're the assistant to the regional manager or whatever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Five euros from Jonathan Brockett. I love to call in and talk to Arden about regret surrounding pausing transition. I'm never off work when she's on. Also, I'm a chicken. Hashtag Team Poppy. Well, Arden is on next week. Uh, and if you at any time are off work during the like three hours we're on air, you know, let us know and we can try and fit you in because I think that's quite uh, an under talked about and important topic. Of course, Arden, if you want to talk about that, I know you've talked about it before. So um, yeah, I'm sure you wouldn't mind. About it. Uh, won't spend too much time on it right now since it's super chat, but if you want to call yeah, it, yeah, yeah, do it next week detail. or whenever. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's a good topic. 499 from Seven Lions in Thai language, women end sentences with ka and men end sentences are with krup. So your gender is shared implicitly every time you speak. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Um, I don't know if I'm going to bother trying to do it, but even like the word hello, it's like, hello, I'm a woman, or hello, I'm a man. Um, oh, God, I'll try it. It's like sour day car and sour day cup, or sour day crap, um, which is, it's interesting that, like, because, you know, different languages of gender different different ways, and it's it's kind of interesting they've kind of built in this pronoun thing and it was also interesting when because the first time i went to thailand i remember learning the word hello and then the second time i went to thailand i was like oh yeah i now need to say a different word <laughs> so yeah cool stuff uh 10 canadians from kathleen moncrief hashtag team ben is the best team to throw money away on well you've definitely thrown your money away today <laughs> Because he's not even here. <laughs> Thanks, Kathleen. Ten dollars from uh, Adrian Morgan. Happy Thursday. Okay. Uh, I hope everyone has a good day and eats good food and tells a trans person they're good looking today. Well, someone has told me I'm good looking today, so it's a good day. Um, great show. Good luck at work. Uh, hashtag Team Doctor Ben. Thank you very much, Adrian. That's just totally reminded me of something about that Ben was talking about earlier. Maybe I'll do a rant right at the end about it. But anyway. Uh, I just want to add, Next. well, I'm glad that you took it as a compliment. Generally speaking, we, your chat, if you compliment the appearance of a host in chat, you will get, uh, your chat will get deleted. Oh, so I'd sorry. really like yeah. it if people who call in don't comment on the appearance of the hosts in the future. Uh, so It happens. So what I would... I knew that came across as a genuine compliment, so it was fine, um, and it wasn't too cringe. I w guess I what I always want to communicate is, I'm never compliment fishing. I'm not like especially when I'm saying about these weirdos are calling me all these names. I don't I don't need the compliments. I get them enough in my real life, and that's not a flex. I just I don't really care about it. Um, and I always fight. It's sometimes it's cringe. It's like. Oh yeah, all these people call me an ugly man, and all these people, and the people are like, oh my god, Katie, but you're beautiful. You're such a strong woman. I'm like, oh, that, 
it's kind of cringe because I'm not trying to communicate that. I'm not asking for like validation here. I'm trying to say, look at these fucking freaks and laugh at them with me. I don't, I don't need a hug. I want you to laugh. I want you to like point and jeer at these weirdos. So, um, thanks for the compliment. But yeah, I'm, I, I'll retract my uh, extra applause for it and stick with Arden and say it is a good idea to not send creepy messages about the hosts because it's very easy to cross a line. And uh, it's best we just don't. Um, Five dollars from Stephanie Helms. Great to see you back. Thanks, Stephanie. Great show today. Have to go with hashtag Team Ben, or he'll kick me out of his wine bitches club. Oh, have you got one of his mugs? <laughs> Are you drinking wine out of a mug? Good stuff. I might do that tomorrow. <clears throat> Five pounds from Orestes. Any quick advice for a UK parent of an? Non-binary, eighteen-year-old. Thanks for your time tonight. You and Ben. Hashtag Ben tonight. Katie forever. <laughs> a Ben is not just for Christmas, but for life. Um, yeah, my advice is in the UK. Uh, I guess it depends on where you are in the process of various things. But you can contact um, gendered intelligence, mermaids, and gender GP um, for various help with things like. Gendered intelligence can help with um, like legal transition stuff, like where to fill in forms and things. And um, mermaids maybe helps more of younger people and families, but they certainly have resources. And gender GP can help with healthcare. So check those places out. Also, get in the queue for the NHS right now because it will be like two hundred years before they are seen. So. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, ben, ben was back for a second. <laughs> no, it freezes on <laughs> the last frame. You? I tried to send it right to just <laughs> you, but I fucked up. <laughs> ben was coming back for, from the dead. Um, yeah, I don't know. Can I do a completely unrelated rant about something? Go for it. Before I close the show. So earlier we were talking about accommodations for people when we are talking about pronouns and talking about installing a ramp for disabled people and i think that this is one of those cases where it's important to talk to the people who need these resources before just doing it without thinking so one of my uh, good friends is in a wheelchair and i've done a lot of uh, wheelchair pushing recently and sometimes they've installed a ramp and that is great and i can't really complain about there being a ramp because it's much easier than like trying to carry up some stairs or something but sometimes they're just the most bullshit ramps where they obviously haven't really, you know, they're just like either really steep or super shallow and go on for like miles and miles and miles. And also when you're like going to an airport, sometimes they insist on this ramp, but then they don't let you put the wheelchair up the ramp and they like try and get the person to walk up a ramp, which is more difficult than this. It's complicated and I'm not a disabled person and I can't really speak on this issue, but I think when a lot of the time when it comes to accommodations like for disabled people and for trans people and for everyone like the the caller earlier was saying that oh I don't know if trans people really appreciate that it's like if you're not a trans person why are you commenting on this why are you involved in deciding what accommodations are good for us and it's the same with like sometimes some disabled com accommodations are not well thought out and I don't think are probably planned by disabled people or even involved in the consultation process at all. Um, so I guess as a general point, if you are someone who is trying to make things more inclusive for everyone uh, and you want to like put in a ramp or consider your language or something like that, try and talk to someone from one of the groups that you're trying to help because uh, it's, it could be easy to have good intentions and to just make a total mess of it um, because that does happen sometimes. Anyway, that's not really related to anything. I just thought of it earlier, and then I just thought, if I say this on the call, we're going to talk about pronouns for another half an hour, and it's like, I'm so sick of pronouns. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching the show. <laughs> Sorry if you really wanted to hear about pronouns. You can maybe call in in two weeks' time when it is going to be uh, Arden and Hannah Reloaded, according to the sheet. Um, 
But you could tune in next week and talk to me and Arden about anything other than pronouns, which would be really good. Or maybe what you could do is watch some of the other shows on this channel because there are loads of good stuff coming up. Um, on Sunday, we have the Sunday show with Jimmy and Matt. Uh, we've got Skep Talk on Monday with John Gleason. We've got on Wednesday, we've got Matt um, doing the hang up with K and B. I'm not yeah, quite sure no, what that is. J Jimmy it's misheard me when I said that name to okay. him. It's Kane, like K A N E B. That uh, a YouTuber oh, okay, okay. who does philosophy content, but Jimmy heard K and B. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've got K and B <laughs> on with Matt on Wednesday. And then, yeah, you can come off and round the week, Thursday to Thursday, for me and Ard next week. It'd be really great. And uh, yeah, see you around. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Thank you to our Patreon producers. You guys are amazing. And I finally got the list updated. See, aren't you proud of me? It's not last month's list for five days. All right. Have a good night, everyone.